hello, there you are. For my next five minute photo guide, I'm in Hampshire, a National Trust property, Mottisfont Abbey. And it survived the Reformation, incidentally, by becoming a private residence. And as I've said, it's now in the care of the National Trust. I'm with friends, they're waiting over there. They're too shy to come into the camera, by the way. Anyway, we're going to have a look around the garden, the rose garden, and also go inside the house, which is well known for Rex Whistler. It's quite a challenge. It's fairly cloudy. As you can see, there's a little spot of sun coming out. In fact, it's the only bit we've had so far. But anyway, let me now take you around Mottisfont Abbey on this tour with this camera, the one I'm using now, it's the OM system, OM5, the 12 to 45 lens, and nothing else except, incidentally, two stout legs for hand holding. See you shortly. The Reformation brought about a seismic change in many religious bodies. Abbeys like Fountains and Revo were abandoned and today are in ruins. Now, Tewkesbury and Beverley became parish churches. The buildings saved and, in the case of Mottisfont Abbey, converted into private residences. Evidence of Mottisfont's previous existence can still be seen, particularly the solarium, largely intact and dating from the early 13th century. Over the years, ownership passed between several families, bringing their own changes to the abbey. When viewed from the south, the house appears to be in four stages of development. The property passed to the National Trust in 1957. It is not far from Romsey, and access from the main road to Stockbridge. The day was cloudy most of the time. The trick is to create a composition with no sky, and then only when essential, and just a small amount. It won't add anything, otherwise it becomes the brightest component of the picture, even though it can be toned down in post-production. Gardens benefit from soft light, particularly close-ups, otherwise shadows dominate. But being a walled garden surrounded by trees, removing the sky was not difficult. This is the Rose Garden, but visited before they came into bloom. I shot on programme most of the time, only changing to aperture priority to manage depth of field. I kept on programme inside the house, and, being a cloudy day, controlling contrast was not a problem. Quite likely, the camera defaulted to f4 in low light, the widest aperture on the 12-45 Pro. Even so, because of the OM5's superior image stabilisation, I kept to 200 ISO for best quality and could still handhold. Shooting at a higher ISO is all very well, but some of my clients don't like it, especially if it wasn't necessary. I don't make changes to camera controls if there was no point in the first place. The highlight of the house tour is the Maud Russell Saloon, featuring the work of Rex Whistler, renowned for his three-dimensional paintings that look uncannily real. 
The realism of the window permits can be clearly demonstrated by comparing the front aspect with the rear, the illusion hardly believable. I was fortunate in getting the saloon to myself, as an impromptu talk took place in the dining room, where I left my friends, which gave me space for a few precious minutes. I left the room wondering what was real and what was illusory. The grounds are extensive, but before leaving, don't overlook the walk by Abbey Stream that brings the River Test closer to the house. It is marked on the map presented upon arrival. Entirely on the level, it makes a pleasant and easy conclusion to the tour.